Well, here I am over at iCast. Listen, I'm not going to be too big of a nerd. I haven't been here in a few years. Hopefully, I'm not wasting anyone's time and I want to get to the good stuff. All right, let's go up these stairs and not ooh and wow at everything. Let's be a human being out here. All right, got our official badge. I'm from Wilmington, North Carolina. I've been kayak fishing for over 15 years. Been on lots of different crafts, so I'm kind of specific what I like. Um, let's just say for uh, argument's sake, I spend about 100 days on average uh, each year on the water and I go fishing. I don't just, you know, dilly dally, so. All right, I'm at my first big stop. This is really what I wanted to try. This is a new old town. All right, I've got my buddy Ryan Lilly with Old Town here. Hey, what's going on? Old Town, fill in the blank. Big Water EPDL Plus 132 in our Old Town Sportsman line. This thing looks awesome. So it's got some familiar parts that I'm gonna probably ease right into. And we're gonna get Ryan right here on the water and he's gonna show me what's what and what I could use it for. Yeah, sounds good. Let's get out on the water. All right, Ryan just sat me down in the kayak. It's very similar to the Big Water 132 or the uh, Old Town Predator. I'm sorry, you're gonna have to look at my feet. I hate that, but I'm going right. I'm going zero to 60 here. Dang, that's almost scary. <laughs> Doesn't tell me my speed per miles, but all right. You can like, as soon as you kick off, it slows down. We were just playing around. I literally stepped into this kayak for the first time. So a lot of this stuff is, it's hard to get feedback on immediately, but that was really cool. So I went to power level five. Um, I'm gonna just go to something more reasonable since we're in a pond, then I wanna crash into something. I went up to power level three. There's a quick disengagement and, and comfortably pedaling. I got Ryan up here. Crank it to 10, sir. Just to give it an idea. And yeah, that's awesome. First impressions, this is awesome. Um, really cool system here. Five is gonna take a little getting used to because I feel like my feet are not doing the engaging. Right. Just gotta, just gotta keep the pedal moving and it's doing all the work. Yeah, it's doing a lot of work. So it seems like three or four so far seems to make a lot of sense. And you're watching this, how fast am I going and all that stuff. This is fast. <laughs> This is fast for minimal effort, rather. Reverse is not quite as instantaneous on high speed, which is smart, because you probably do some damage here. <laughs> but um, what I'm noticing, it engages probably, I'm guessing that's two to three seconds afterwards. I'm pit, am I right on that, about two? Yeah, it's about uh, two revolutions of backward pedaling before it goes into reverse. So I got two, yeah. two revolutions of backward pedaling, and then I'm going into reverse with this guy. This is sick, so it's got a great layout because it is that uh, big water or old town predator as it used to be called a um, little bit of wider did you widen the well yep it's got a wider stern tank well so we took the accessory tracks off the back and blew out the width so it will accommodate you know big catch bags big coolers big crates we really wanted to bring it up to snuff with the current uh, desires of anglers and what they want to bring with them these days we also deepened the cup holder in this so those are the two mold modifications we made uh, well three actually because we changed the shallow water anchor on the back uh, we, we offset it, so now it has the ability to break away if you're using a shallow water anchor. Uh, prior, it went through the hole in the back, which didn't allow for the, uh, the uh, shallow water anchor to break away. So we made that modification as well, but this is the tried and true big water hull. It's designed for those big water conditions, a lot of like what Elias likes to fish on. Drive, can I take, a look, take it out of the water, take a look, see if it looks like what we know, what I know rather. Yeah, boy. <laughs> yep. I think so. For all intents and purposes, the, the lower part of that drive remains completely unchanged. It is the tried and true uh, PDL drive from basically the pedals down. Uh, the change being the motor that now exists in the head unit of the pedal drive. So the beauty in that is we know it's durable. We know it lasts a long time. And, uh, you know, if you forget your battery at home uh, or if you run out of battery, uh, which is hard to do in this kayak, believe it or not, it's still, um, it's still a fully manual pedal drive. So get your, get your butt home. Uh, you've probably seen me on the kayak with a Minn Kota motor on it. That's called the Old Town Autopilot. 
you know, it does cross my mind from a sanity standpoint to not push the limit too far, uh, especially if conditions aren't going to warrant me getting home safely. Um, this gives you, you know, obviously these conditions are always a factor, but this gives a little extra comfort of if I went an extra mile, um, can I fight a current? Um, this is a fast kayak as it is, and it's a stable kayak and it's a very fishable kayak. Um, this is really cool. I'm going to do a couple laps around and then I think we'll, we'll answer, try to, I'll try to pick Brian's brain on some technical questions because saltwater anglers, we, we kind of are rough. <laughs> it's an understatement. Let's cruise around for a minute and then we're going to just pick Brian's brain briefly and uh, see what kind of, see what kind of flaws we can pull out. No, nah, I'm kidding. But <laughs> I'm a critical angler. That's why we love you, man. I don't circulate well in the corporate <laughs> office. Anyway. Let me let me try this. So you can hit cruise control here. I don't know how much. It's a cool feature. I don't know how much I'm going to use it. Probably just to tie knots and stuff. So I do like that, I guess. So what I'm doing here is the light went solid, and I think I can release on it. Nope, I did that wrong. Oh, it is cruising, yeah. Um, and what's great too is the minute you back pedal, there you go, boom. So what I'll show right here is the responsiveness of this is badass. So I'm going to hit it. I'm going to go straight to five, right? And start pedaling, right? It's going to engage, right? This is probably, I don't know, five miles an hour is my guess. Right, headed up to this creek. And typically when you, you hit the steering or you stop, boom, it just stops on you. So you don't have that extra step. And if, then you can start back pedaling. Yeah, this thing's really cool, man. Not a great kayak shill for the most part. So if I'm excited, I think I'm actually excited here. So, all right, Ryan, Ryan. I want to take up all this guy's time, man. Curious about the plugs, the connectors. We'll see the weight. Let's answer a couple of those questions. These are the ones that matter to me. All right, a couple questions that came to mind. Okay. If you hit something while you're under speed, is there any sort of um, detection so yeah, so there's two kill switches built into this kayak. There's one beside your seat, and then there's one attached to the, the pod that's attached to the drive. So if you hit something hard, that drive is designed to swing up and will disconnect that kill switch. Okay. So um, it's a super rugged lower. We know this, we've tested it. That's why we back it with a five-year warranty on the normal PDL drive. So it can take impact. That's why we always recommend people pack extra props and prop pins and things like that, because your prop will, will break before the lower will break. So if you hit something under speed, it's gonna knock the drive up out of the hole. It will disconnect your drive, so you won't maintain you know power in that moment. So there is that safety feature for when you do hit something like a log or a rock or a reef or something like that. Okay, that's kind of one of the first things I was kind of wondering about. Next, let's talk about saltwater's worst enemy, mm -hmm. the plugs. Okay, yes. <laughs> So, uh, just like with our autopilots, we're shipping this thing with dire electric grease, keep them greasy. And, uh, you know, it's just good practice to rinse your stuff after saltwater use in general. So just keep, keep on the maintenance of it. Um, what's great is it's a consumable part. We'll be selling them as parts. Uh, when I we already watch. do, already do that. Yep. So, um, it's something that I would have another set or two on you. And if for whatever reason, the plug fails, you can just swap it out in a hurry. It's not that hard. It plugs in to the drive and it plugs into the boat. So that, that's one connection, and then there's the battery connection underneath uh, your seat inside the boat um, that connects to your battery. And again, it's something that you could swap on the fly. That's what I like to hear. So let's pull some plugs quick. Pull, pull some plugs. This is the main power connector to the... That is what uh, connects the drive to the, uh, the power source. So that's connecting you to the electrical system that's connected to the battery underneath your seat. Okay. And the battery is... So the under battery is underneath your seat. So if you feel confident to stand up, but it's underneath um, it's underneath hatch. that hatch cover there. Let's scoot over. Am I going to be able to wiggle it? Oh. You might. Yeah, and if you want me to get okay. the camera angle for you, I can do that. That new boat feel. So that's where the battery is, is stashed. And we actually, because we're we're on the water, we're swapping batteries every few hours to keep them fresh. It's not strapped in, but there is a strap that goes over that battery to secure it into that cradle that it sits in. This is the connection right here. Simple. Super simple. It's proven. We've been testing it for multiple years. 
Um, and uh, there's a lot of testing time and validation time that went into making sure everything is rock solid. This is not rust to market whatsoever. <laughs> I don't think it is. It doesn't look like it is, no. honestly. But uh, it's worth noting that battery ships with the kayak. So if someone buys this kayak, it will come with a 20 amp, 36 volt battery with, with your boat. So you don't have to source a battery after. Cool. Just need to source a battery for your accessories if you're running a fish finder. Right. Awesome. That's awesome news right there. I like that. That's simple. Um, it's easy to maintain, easy to clean off. Um, yeah, I really like that going unpowered you pop both these out put the this wire in the hole yeah or you can leave it connected if you so choose yeah. but yeah you can just leave that disconnected yeah. if you're just manually out yeah around. that makes sense yeah. um cool yeah i like that i've been i like that a lot of stuff i like so far what's the weight of the unit the hull is the same as the 132 weight yeah so the weight's going to be slightly heavier just because it's got internal wiring but we're talking you know not ounces not pounds yeah. Uh, but it's the same hull. So uh, the, the one uh, weight difference is the drive is heavier. Okay. It's about 34 pounds versus the standard 24 pounds. So it's about 10 extra pounds of weight, um, but you're getting a motor with it. So, you know, a factor there. But the battery too, is not, it's compact, it's lightweight, it's a lithium ion battery. So you're not having a lot of battery weight on board either. So it's not impacting your, your uh, max capacity, much like a 100 amp hour battery in an autopilot. Yeah, for sure. Moving it too. One of the things uh, I'm, I'm excited is this guy stays in the car, wheel everything down, and then the second trip back from the car, you grab the motor and you're ready yeah. to go. Yeah. It's not too much stress on your body. The hull's still backed by the limited lifetime hull warranty. The drive's backed by a two year warranty. And uh, we're really excited to get this thing launched. We're excited for you to put it through its, its paces. I'll tell you, I've been fishing out of this thing secretly for the last two and a half years. Um, as we've worked out all the kinks and made sure that this thing is polished and ready for the consumers. And I'll tell you what, man, it is rugged and the battery life is super impressive. And what are we talking a full day? You know, so not late, not. I'll tell you, it's spec for um, if you're in cruise control five, so at highest speed, it's rated for three hours of continuous battery life on a full charge. But I'm getting days out of mine because. I'm, I'm getting up and going to my spot and then I'm fishing. I'm using e-assist sometimes, I'm trolling sometimes. Um, and so you're getting, you're gonna get significant battery life out of it because you're not fully relying on full motorized speed five, um, you know, conditions the entire time you're out on the water. I will say that once you drop it down to speed four in, in cruise control, you're adding about nine hours of battery life and you're gonna get up to 12 hours of battery life in speed four full motorized that's not any human power whatsoever knock that down to three you're at about 36 hours speed two 48 hours so it's significant um and uh it's worth noting that you're not going to fish it and use it in full yeah. motorized um and so just you can you have the confidence in knowing that this battery on a full charge if you take care of it it's going to take you places and you do not have to worry about running out of battery all right ryan answered the questions there that were peaking in my head it was, um, battery life Maintenance, um, a couple of things looked real solid here, man. This is gonna be a really good kayak, man. This is gonna be cool. I'm excited to get on the water with it and start, you know, doing some things that are, you know, kind of limiting that we're typically for a kayak platform that I can now maybe expand into. Um, I think there will be a lot, that's for sure. All right, one Thanks. last thing. Yeah, man. Oh, I just creeped into my head. As I said, I'm pushing the envelope. <laughs> submersible all right i asked ryan a tough question we have to get an engineer involved so the motor's got an ipx7 seal on it um so basically it can be submerged for brief periods of time um and the engineer said it floats if i got the hatch closed so i was kind of as we were talking about things i was going to do with this um let's say i take it out front uh that's a heavy drive conditions coming in kind of suck if i crash and burn is it the end of the world for the drive was really you know come in you're going to paddle in manually but you're gonna take off the, the drive and close the electrical connections like a normal person would. Um, let's say it takes a quick tumble in the surf, is it doomed? So we got reassurance that an IPX7 uh, seals on this drive, so that's And sweet. the battery. And the battery. And the battery, yeah. So I got home, and I was looking through my footage, and then I looked on YouTube, and I already saw there was, I don't know, 50 reviews about the technical specifications of this kayak. So let's not bog down too much in these details. Sometimes you, it's easy to get excited about a new product when you're there. So I give myself two days to think about it. A little bit of hype, is it useful? Where do I feel about it? Um, honestly, if I didn't like it, I wouldn't make a video about it. 
and it's not something that's for everybody either because you know not everybody wants to go three miles somewhere um, not everybody covers so much water it's um i think it's one of the few kayaks i've seen that i think are is pretty uh, it grips the saltwater angler more uh, it's been a while because as the kayaks have gotten wider and more stable they're still fishable platforms but um, to cover a little bit of mileage that's sometimes required in saltwater or to handle certain conditions uh, wind current and covering the water at that point and then these sorts of things can get kind of challenging so we've had a, we now have a platform that can comfortably cruise over four miles an hour while retaining the functionality of a pedal drive system uh, without overweighing it or cluttering it uh, all these sorts of things in my opinion um, I could bring it somewhere remove this electric function and it's as fishable as it is without um, that electrical add-on with space in the back for a crate and cooler and ice to keep fish um, then on top of that I can drift fish how I want and uh, there I am gain a lot of things on having that manually powered function uh, versus going full electric with something like a Minn Kota on there. First of all, what I thought about obviously was having that confidence to go home if I went a little further. You know, what creeps into my head every time when I'm playing video games on a remote kayak, all right, I hit the point now, do I want to paddle this thing home in an emergency? Well, having a pedal drive that functions, sure, two and a half, three and a half miles is going to be not looking forward to my pedal home, but if the drive is as operational manually um, as it should be, um, I won't have a problem getting home. I won't have to call for assistance. It's a pretty big deal, man. Um, you know, there's other things that obviously I noticed immediately on the water. Maybe I didn't verbalize it. Um, there's always a better connective response and ability to maneuver, set yourself up to how you're going to fish in current and salt water if it's manual. I can feel what the boat wants to do, making the twists and turns with my, my legs to set myself up is far more natural than adjusting it with a remote. Um, you know, sure, the anchoring function is not automatic and there's some things that having that spot lock thing, you can't duplicate that, I get that. But for the majority of my fishing and how I, I like to fish, having that freedom to make micro adjustments in current and conditions, well, I think sometimes it still outweighs that spot lock feature by, by a long shot. You know, uh, drift fishing is still, you know, a little bit of a feel for it kind of thing. And I feel like I like to drift fish a lot for my types of fishing versus saying, well, the spot lock function kind of takes over. Um, making those micro adjustments through structures and currents and all the fun stuff seems to have a lot of value to me and my type of fishing. So that's me. It might be you as a saltwater angler, but you know, a lot of people that spot lock function is nice. But I still like that automatic responsiveness that my, my body gives in current. It feels like I've I still have a pedal drive kayak that's not quite motorized at the same time. It might be hard to understand that, but as if somebody's fished on both um, pedal drive kayaks that are pure manual and then electric, um, there's a, a certain gap of connection between you and the kayak now and the water. And obviously I've thought about other things that you gain. Saltwater anglers, you now have a little bit more speed to, to troll up pelagic fish. Sure, you know, because most of these fishing kayaks that are pedal drive uh, based, over four mile an hour is sustained is it's hard maybe you can with a couple exceptions sure you know the hobie revolution it comes to my brain that was one that you can cruise over for but this you have that extra space that extra comfort um for a long day on the water you can bring a cooler full of ice with your to keep fish there's just a lot of nice little tricks with that um so and to keep that higher trolling speed if if needed i don't love trolling but same time that higher move around speed to go from one area to another to another another so i've 
really enjoyed what I saw here with this kayak. Um, sure, there's going to be some torture tests we have to do too, right? So, engineer told me it's an IPX7 drive on the pedal drive, but throw in some sand and some grit and you know, these sorts of things are <laughs> they're corrosive and they're tough to deal with in a saltwater environment. But, you know, maybe everything's kind of easily swapped out and replaced. Uh, Old Town's pretty good brand in terms of do-it-yourself maintenance. All right, that's my take and my impression on it, the shill-free edition. Sometimes it's worth something, right?